Poucher. Hello, welcome to Keith's Whiskey Vlog. My name is Keith. I'm a tour guide and I like whiskey. Hence the name Whiskey Tour Guide Keith. Not the most original. We're going to do a little whiskey tasting for you today and I am very excited because it is a bottle that I have never tried before. It's unopened and the mystery contained within. Let's see what happens. Not sure if you're familiar with this whiskey. It's not actually from a distillery. It is called Finlagen, so there's no such thing as the Finlagen Distillery, but Finlagen is a little place on the island of Isla. So this is a whisky that comes from Isla. It is distilled on Isla, but it's a mystery distillery. Just adds to the excitement. Um, they have a few, it's, it's a private company that uh, have a few different Finlagen. Finlagen's like the, the masthead, the banner, if you like the, the brand name. And they've got quite a few different types of whiskies, Finlagen Old Reserve, Finlagen um, Port Cask, Red Wine Cask. So this is the Finlagen Red Wine Cask that we're going to be tasting today. So I'll read you what it says on the bottle. There's quite a good bit of history on the box on this one. Look at the colour of this as well. Uh, cannot wait to try it. It's uh, red wine cast matured, hence the dark colour. And uh, let's see if I can use my t shirt, I'm not sure, but cannot wait. So, what do they say? Finlagen, Isla, single malt. So, you know it comes from Isla, you know it's single malt. It's the three words you need, it's all you need, in my humble opinion. Other opinions are available. Red wine cask matured. There is no age statement, so who knows how old it is. It's going to be between five and ten years old but I wouldn't suspect to be much more than that. And it comes in at a lovely 46%. So I'm expecting a little bit of a, a, little bit of a presence in my mouth. Although there is no distillery at Finlagen Castle, this ancient home of the Lord of the Isles lends its name to one of the island's finest malt whiskies. When has anybody ever said in the bottle that uh, we use average casks, or it's one of the most average malt whiskies from the island. Of course it's the finest. They're all fine. I wonder if that's the make bad stuff. Now it does also say here, small batch release. I think it's uh, about 7,000 bottles. So it's a sort of limited expression, but nothing too exclusive. So some of the advertising stuff, and as I say, this is quite a decent little bit of history. As a tour guide, um, you're always looking for little snippets here and there. Nothing too in-depth, but this will do nicely. So, specially selected Petey Isla, Finlagen Isla Single Malt. On the island of Isla lies Loch Finlagen. Remember, we're in Scotland, we don't have lakes, we have lochs, Loch Ness, Loch Lomond. So you're not really saying Loch properly unless you're spitting all over everything in front of you. So on the island of Isla lies Loch Finlagen, a place of great importance in Scottish history. In the Loch there are three islands, two of which are Eilin Moor. Now the Gaelic speakers all know what that is. Eilin, small island, Moor means big, so large island, Eilin Moor. And Eilin, no, now I don't speak Gaelic, so I'm going to give the next one a punt, the pronunciation. Eilin, now... Comarley, maybe Covarley, maybe Coarley. C O M H A I R L E. Now I believe that the M H can sometimes be silent. It can sometimes be a V. So we'll go for Ilan na Covarley. Covarley. I'm going to Covarley. I'm going to go for Covarley. Covarley. Who knows? It means Council Isle. So apologies to all the Gaelic speakers for butchering your lovely language. But there we are. So there's three islands, two of them, Large Island and Council Island, where the installation of the Macdonald Lords of the Isles took place. The chiefs of Clan Donald chose Finlagen as their home and the centre of their lordship. So the Isla is often referred to as the Cradle of Clan Donald. So that's where Ronald Macdonald was born and made his first cheeseburger who knows but anyway you've heard the name mcdonald now for anyone who's not familiar obviously we have scotland the mainland and you've got islands all around the coast of scotland but down here is the island of isla 
and with a trusty whiskey tour guide Keith pointer in the northeast not quite in the northeast corner the northeast portion of the island of Isla is Loch Finlagen now the Lord of Isles uh, controlled most of the islands and some of the mainland as well a sort of a long sort of slender semicircle you could say um, of the mainland but all these islands they were seafaring they were uh, probably in fact almost certainly descended from the Vikings so they had their fleets their galleys their and their boats and they would go all around so the Lord of the Isles chose his home here on Loch Finlagen on Isla the Lord of the Isles ruled the islands and part of the west coast of Scotland during the 13th to the 15th centuries, virtually independent of royal control, until 1493, when the Lordship of the Isles fell to James IV of Scotland, and all keen historians will know that was Mary Queen of Scots, old man, James IV. The heir to a strong Gaelic and Norse tradition, the Lord of the Isles, now and again his title in Gaelic, coming up and as I say I don't speak Gaelic so I'll give it a, a go. Re Inch Gal. So Re I think is Royal. Inch Island Gal. Whatever I'm not sure. The Re Inch Gal, Lord of the Isles, was one of the most powerful figures in the country with the small islands in Loch Finlagen a centre of symbolic and historical importance. Today a charitable organisation named the Finlagen Trust maintains the site and the Vintage Malt Whiskey Company Limited is a proud supporter of the Trust. The Vintage Malt Whiskey Company Limited being the people who produce Isla Single Malt under the Finlagen name. Now I've reviewed another Finlagen. Check out the video. There was a Port Wine Limited Edition. Uh, Fijula, I think it was 2017 if I remember correctly. Maybe 2018. I think it was 2017. Check out that video and uh, you'll find it a little bit more about Finlagen. But you've got the main sort of village, the main sort of castle, the main home on the, the big island, Island Moor. And you've got this island in a loch on an island in the sea. So you've got those concentric circles of defence. So quite a, quite a clever guy, the Lord of the Isles. Right, um, let's see what else it says on here. If anything... Yeah, just again that bit, although there's no distillery at Finlagen Castle, the ancient home of the Lord of the Isles lends its name to one of the island's finest malt whiskies. There's a little picture, you probably can't quite see it uh, on the label there of Finlagen Castle. But worth a little visit if you're going to go on Isla. A lovely little spot. Nothing, don't expect too much and you'll be, you'll be blown away. Now, on the back of the bottle, I'll actually give you some tasting notes. Uh, on the nose, delicious sweet peat smoke and red berried fruits. On the palate, smoky bacon and strawberries with plum notes, sea salt and chewy earthy peat. Uh, grape skin tannins and on the finish, long lingering sweet smoke. Now, um, I believe this is a non-chill filtered whisky. So, oh, we'll get that in the taste as well. Um, I think it mentions somewhere about uh, I wasn't on here um, when I was reading up on it. It's produced from uh, hogshead casks. Now, hogshead hogsheads are about I think the second biggest cask. You've got your standard barrels are about two hundred liters. The hogsheads are about two hundred and fifty liters. Uh, they were first standardised in the Act of Parliament in 1423. So uh, there wasn't until the late 1400s that whisky really was recorded in Scottish history, but they were using barrels for various things before that. So the hogshead goes back a long way. Um, and these, the hogsheads that they use for this particular expression were sourced in the Basque country in Spain. The north of Spain. Now, if you know anything about the Basque, very um, although they are part of Spain, they've been trying to break away for a long time, very independently minded, and uh, a lot in common. Don't want to get too political, but a lot in common with the people of Scotland in that regard. Um, okay, now the last thing before we get tasting this, get opening this, 
Um, anyone who's been to Isla, you can fly to Isla, but I always recommend you go by boat. It takes a bit of a drive to get there, but um, there's two boats. That basically, you've got one on Isla and one on the mainland, and they both sort of leave at the same time. They cross and they pass, and then it takes about, it's about two hours, I think, and then they set off again and they pass again. So when you go to Isla, you've got a ch one in two chance either of the boats. I think uh, the older of the two boats, oh, from memory, is it the Hebridean Isles, I think? Calmac Ferries run the ferry service. I think it's the Hebridean Isles. It's a bit older, it's a bit smaller, but the better of the two boats, the one you're always hoping for, is the MV Finlagen. So it's named after, not the whiskey, but obviously the Lord of the Isles. I've got my trusty chib, just in case we need it here. But uh, we'll see if we can get into the whiskey without it. Oh, I'm so looking forward to this. fair bit about it put that way quite fruity to start with and a little bit smoky a little bit sort of malty actually as well yeah if you've ever, ever been in a distillery where they do their own floor maltings it's got, it's, got, it's got a fair amount of that smell about it right let's get it poured Quite fresh, a bit of sea air there almost. Listen to that. Um, I got this as part of a, a batch of whiskey that I ordered from uh, Master of Malt. Uh, if you look at my Whiskey Unboxing 1 video, you'll see I've been dying to get into it ever since. Been saving it. Right. We'll get rid of that. So, let's have a little sniff. On the nose, I say quite fruity, quite vibrant, it's like a fruit burst. What was it saying on the nose again? It said um, delicious, sweet peat smoke and red berried fruits. So I'd go with the red berried fruits for sure. What do you say, cranberries? A little bit of peat. Um, look at that sweetness, the sort of the red wine sweetness. It's a red wine cast matured, stating the obvious. But almost like, what's the smell? What's it used to get? Uh, you went on holiday to places like Spain, Sangria. That was it. The sort of the, the red wine punch thing. It's got a bit of that about it as well. Quite sweet, quite vibrant. Not too smoky. A little bit, but not nothing too much. So, very fresh, very interesting. It's not let me down so far. It's like when you you know when you got the the cinema and you've got a, a film that's got good reviews and you're a bit disappointed. It's not the film's fault. You go in with too high expectations. I was a little bit concerned that I might come to this with high expectations and be disappointed. So far, so good. Nice, that's good. Oh. Oh. Right. Peat smoke, mostly smoke, full on. Uh, I remember when I tried the red wine, the, the previous Finlagen that I tasted, if I had to guess, I would have gone for a Laphroaig, and it's got all that about it again. Um, if you go for something like Ardbeg, you've got your full-on peat, but it's a bit sharper. See the Ardbeg 10. Laphroaig's got a bit more behind it. It's very much in that sort of ballpark. It's lovely. It's really good. It's not hanging about for too long, but I'm not getting any real sharpness. So the lack of age statement, there's no problem there. It's not. It doesn't feel too young. Uh, 
that's so smoky. Um, almost a sort of smoked meat, that sort of saltiness as well. The classic sawdust swept up from a warehouse floor. So a bit of woodiness, but real peat earthy, dirty. Just how I like it. Uh, I couldn't possibly see how I would really like it after the, my expectations, but not disappointed. Afterwards, there's a little, it's still got that freshness, it's still got that juiciness, that red, red berryness about it. Uh, almost sort of red grape, and that sort of thing. And that's a really nice whiskey. Interesting, I don't even want to go any further with water, but since I'm here on a serious business, I'm going to be adding some water for you as well. That's lovely. I'll be drinking more of it when the video stops. Let's put some water in. I don't think I'll need much, it's quite strong already. Uh, my last bottle. I did share it with a few people because it was it was a really really interesting bottle. It was almost pink in colour, being the port wine cask. Um, shared it with a good good few friends, but also my good lady wife tasted it and liked it. And I think if she tasted this, she'd like it as well. So I'll have to keep it keep it under wraps, keep it keep it keep 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 it a distance from it. Right, so a little bit of water added, just two drops. I wouldn't see much difference in the nose again. It's, it's, it's a completely different on the nose to the mouth. Um, it's clear, it's cleaner. There's not that real underswell of, of, of muck, of dirt. Still got that juiciness. It's got, got a really nice fresh burst. I'm really enjoying this one. You might be able to tell. Yeah, it's taken a little bit of the edge off. It's opened it out a little bit from the the full-on warehouse floorness of the last the non-water tasting, but it's still there. It's made it a little bit milder. It's made it a little bit more palatable. I wouldn't say any worse, but it'll make it more palatable for people who maybe don't like peaty smoky whiskies. For me, I could take that either way. I've got a bit of heat now as well, so I can feel more heat coming down. Sometimes I, I like in a lot of Isla whiskies to almost like a dagger down the throat. It's not as bad as that. It's, there's a warmth spreading rather than the heat dagger. So very nice. So for a youngish whiskey, a potentially young whiskey, I'm not sure how old it is. Um, not bad at all. Okay, beautiful, lovely, excellent. I don't rate my whiskies uh, with an 8.8, 9.4, or anything like that. But I am not disappointed. I'm very happy and for what you pay for this it's around me about I can't even remember exactly about 37 38 pounds something like that um, you're not going to pay much more than 40 pound for a non-age statement but um, well worth it for a non distillery name non-age statement that packs a lot of flavor and a lot of oomph you can feel that that warmth really sits heating up now a bit more peppery now okay if you can't get your hands on this and uh, you're looking for something in the same sort of ballpark we're talking about I uh, mentioned the Finlagen the port reserve the one that I had was a, a sort of port cask finish the one that I had was a limited edition but there's a standard 46% one check that one out as well same sort of uh, idea uh, what else I mentioned Ardbeg earlier in Lefroy, so you're looking at something like the Ardbeg Dark Cove, which is a real sort of peat monster, but a bit of a sherry, a real sort of sherry kick as well. Unfortunately, that's a limited past edition. That won't, that'll be hard to get your hands on, but have you ever seen it in, the, in a bar? Ardbeg Dark Cove. And the Lefroy version, it's a bit crude to say it, but uh, the Lefroy version of the Dark Cove in this sort of area as well would be the Laphroaig Lore, L-O-R-E. So try the Finlagen port cask matured, the Ardbeg uh, Dark Cove or 
the Laphroaig lore. If you like it smoky, you like it from Isla, and you like a bit of fruitiness, sherry, port, anything like that, which is all, that's all my boxes ticked, then you will not be disappointed, I'm sure, with this one. Enjoy. Cheers for now. Slangevar. <laughs>